It seems that I've been classified as a political YouTuber, or at least according to the Transparency Tube, the first comprehensive look at politics on YouTube. According to this list, I am classified as center on the political spectrum, which is at least somewhat accurate, and I'm also classified as anti-SJW, which is accurate if you look at most of what I talk about in my channel. There are so many people that got misclassified on the list that this entire thing has turned into a joke that people laugh at. At one point, Count Dankula's wife Sue got classified as right, even though her content is not political in any way. Thankfully, she got removed. You can visit the website's link down below and see if either your channel or your favorite YouTuber's channel got misclassified. So how did I get myself into this mess? Well, I got into this mess because of you. Yes, you people, specifically my subscribers, you people got me into this mess. It's because this website uses a classification algorithm based on who you subscribe to. But we'll get to that later. For now, allow me to make my political leaning or lack thereof very clear. I have no interest in politics. I'm interested in the stupidity that might involve politics, but the politics itself, I just don't really care. For example, I don't care about the 2020 election, but I do care about people telling the non-political people that they should get involved with the 2020 election. I apparently should care about the 2020 election. Okay, first off, I'm an Indonesian, and I care about American politics about as much as Americans care about Indonesian politics. Second, I am not very well informed in American politics, and I don't want to get myself well informed in it. I do want to get myself informed in how to use After Effects or Blender or literally anything else more useful than American freaking politics. The reason why I talk a lot about things related to politics is because there are so many politically obsessed people online using popular entertainment as a way to push their politics, and for the most part, they do this by taking whatever thing that is popular today and talk about them through the lens of a political zealot. The two most recent examples are the Guardian video on anime, which I talk about here, and that Guardian article talking about how Flight Simulator 2020 is destroying the environment, which I talk about here. Actually, The Guardian in general is a good example. I talk about these topics because they are fun to talk about. They are fun to talk about, and they are fun to make videos about. And most importantly, they are dumb. And I know they are dumb because a good portion of what they use to spread their politics are things that I'm actually knowledgeable at. I don't know about American politics, but I do know about anime and video games. And I know that you're talking a lot of nonsense when you claim that video games can lead people into becoming insert bad ideology here or insert bad behaviors here. And here's where my center part of the classification comes in. Notice in how the previous statement I say insert bad ideology here or insert bad behaviors here. That's because both sides of the political spheres have used video games to make their own stupid moralistic statement. I've seen people who say that video games will turn people into the far right and I've seen people who say that video games will turn people into the far left. I've seen people who say that video Video games will make you to hate women, and I've seen people who say that video games will make you to hate Jesus. Both of these sides are dumb, and that's why I'm putting myself on the center. As for the anti-SJW part, unfortunately most of the people who make these bad takes are the far left SJWs. This is not to say that people who are against SJWs cannot be stupid. Oh hell freaking yes they can, and I have made fun of them as well, both in videos and on streams. One of my video even got age restricted for it. Thank you, YouTube! It's just that most of the videos that I make are mocking the far left, because they're the ones that not only make the dumbest of takes, but they have a lot of influence over the gaming industry or the entertainment industry in general. Point is, all that I do in this channel is to provide my perspective in why stupid people are stupid, which I know is like providing my perspective in why jumping off of cliffs is dangerous, but I have to say something because there are people who actually do jump off of cliffs and don't know that it's dangerous. And it's not like those are the only type of videos I make. I do talk about video games as well. Heck, the longest video that I made this year is my love letter to Katawa Shoujo, which you should absolutely play by the way. Now let's get back into the Transparency Tube. Their about page is very blatant in why they want to build Transparency Tube. It's because they want to provide the data necessary to understand the YouTube space and the spread of politics within its platform. You can go ahead and 
can watch the data all you like and form your opinions on whether or not the classifications are correct. I'm not interested in that, but I am more interested in the methodology because it involves data mining. That is something that I actually know a thing or two about. My college thesis involves Twitter data classification of specific earthquake events in Indonesia in 2019. The data that I collected goes all the way up to thousands of tweets, and the objective is to classify each Twitter data in two specific psychological models, which is the dynamic disaster model and rumor theory. In other words, is to classify tweets based on the behaviors of the users and based on whether or not the tweet is an opinion, news, or hoax. I propose several different models to predict those classes and try to figure out which one is the most accurate. I use four different classification methods consisting of naive base, support vector machine or SVM, logistic regression, and random forest. And I use four different vectorization methods as features, which are count vector, word level term frequency, inference document frequency or TFIDF, and gram level TFIDF, and finally character level TFIDF. Basically what I'm trying to say is that I have some level of grasp in what these people are trying to do, which is data mining and classification. But the thing that you need to understand in regards to data mining the internet is that the internet only shows a very narrow viewpoint of what the world is. In my paper specifically, one of the issues being discussed is whether or not it's possible to classify people's behaviors based on their tweets during a certain natural disaster using a psychology model that illustrates the six different behaviors. The result? Well, it's not very good. None of the models and their features manage to break 50% accuracy. The classification and the data are incredibly jumbled. So much misclassified data and the confusion matrix highlights a very particular bias towards certain classes. This is to be expected, unfortunately, because judging an individual's psychological condition during a natural disaster based on the words that they say on Twitter doesn't exactly give a full picture. I have personally consulted psychologists for this, and even at one point seek the assistance of a fellow YouTuber, Aiden Paladin, because social science and psychology are what she's very passionate at. Oh, and she's also on the transparency tube. Simply put, the model will result in several misclassifications, and the reason why my classification models did not have very high accuracies is because I'm telling a machine to classify complex human emotions. Granted, it's a very interesting topic topic to explore and develop, but right now, classifying complex human emotions is not something that machines are very good at. We're not talking a simple positive or negative sentiment analysis, we're talking about the stress, the pre-stress, and the post-stress mental state of someone who just got hit by a natural disaster. Telling machines to classify complex human emotions through the use of text on tweets is not going to produce an accurate or descriptive result. Why? Because the machines look at factual data. In the case of tweets, the factual data that I'm referring to are the words being made by the tweets. Those words are then converted into numbers that can be used by the different classification methods to classify the text. This process is what we call text vectorization. Count vector, for example, take a look at how many words that occur and simply count them. The number of words are then used as the features for the classification. How it works with count vector is the more words words that appear on a specific sentence or a tweet or an article, the more likely that sentence or tweet or an article will become a certain class. It's a little different to something more advanced like TFIDF or term frequency in first document frequency, where they also account other things like the total number of documents and the weight given to each word. So now allow me to explain to you why certain people on the transparency tube got misclassified. It's because the classes are based on political leanings and political leanings are very, very subjective. How many people in both the internet and in the real world are misclassified as having one political view? I, for example, got called right-wing because I don't like the all-female Ghostbusters reboot. On the other hand, I got called left-wing for liking Celeste, or quite recently, Fire Emblem Three Houses. So if human beings have difficulties in pinpointing someone else's political leaning, why would you expect machines to be able to 
pinpoint them accurately. In order for machine learning classification to work, or at least the supervised one, they need to have predetermined data that have to be classified accurately, and they are classified by human beings. So in order for the classification to be correct, the human beings who give the training data needs to make sure that the training data is correct. And considering that we're talking about political leanings, there's gonna be a lot, and I mean a lot of bias involved. According to the About page, they manually classify around 800 channels and use them as training set for the rest of the 7,300 channels that are shown in the tube. Classifying around 800 channels is really not that big of a deal, especially if you're already familiar with the channels themselves. Trust me, I classify thousands of tweets and profiles for my thesis. That's why it takes so long to complete. Not to mention, I have to either download or copy paste or construct from scratch all of the programs that I use to classify, to process the text mining using NLTK, etc. So how do they use machine learning to classify the other 7,300 channels? Remember when I say that I got into this mess because of you, my dear subscribers. Well, here's why. There's a paper that describes the machine learning approach that this website uses. The paper says that this website classifies the channel by using user subscription data. Instead of using the channel and video data as features for classification, as other researchers have, and as how normal people would try to classify a channel's political leaning, the features that they use are the channels shown on a commenter's public subscription page. To put it simply, if you are classified as right, it's not because you have those beliefs. It's because you attracted people who mostly subscribe to other people who are classified as right. In other words, it's guilt by association. It's basically kind of like this. You have a homeless person begging in the streets. You judge the person is homeless because he's begging in the streets and he doesn't really have a home. So logically speaking, you would train the machine to judge it based on those criteria. But nope, instead you train the machine to classify whether or not a person is homeless based on the people who give them spare change. So by this metric, this homeless person is rich because the people who give them spare change are rich people. That's basically how this algorithm works. It's guilt by association. That explains why certain YouTubers who are not political leaning X are classified as political leaning X. It's because their subscribers are subscribed to channels who have political leaning X. Yes, there are channels who are classified accurately, like mine for example, or at least to a certain extent. But that's a broken clock being right. It is possible to make a wild guess in a test and get a good score. You'd have to be very lucky, but it is possible. There are also many false assumptions that the paper uses. The average commenter subscribes to 200 channels, but that doesn't necessarily mean they watch all of their videos, nor does it mean that they agree with the viewpoints of the channels that they subscribe to. There are channels that I subscribe to that have opinions that I don't agree with, but I still subscribe to them because they make entertaining content or informative content. Funnily enough, the paper recognizes this methodology as one of its biggest flaws, so they know that the clock is broken, and yet they use it anyway. The paper reads, we believe there is certainly room for improvement by leveraging other data. I agree, writer. You've been analyzing the political leaning of channels based on their subscribers. Maybe in your next paper, you can judge someone's political leaning by, oh, I don't know, the content of their channel. Here's another very funny thing. The research tests their efficacy through a couple of experiments. The third one compares the research methodology to another research, which uses a predictive model that uses a variety of metadata feature, such as video transcripts, as in the actual content of the video. However, our method achieves a much better accuracy compared to that method. Did you guys see the funny side? The previous research uses video transcripts and it can't always accurately classify a channel's political leaning. You know, just like in real life. Simply put, the less accurate research is the correct one. I don't care if your methods are more 
accurate. Your training data uses human review. You ask these people to review the political leanings of 800 channels, around 800 channels. A political leaning is a very subjective thing. You made a big mistake judging someone's political leaning based on the people that follow them rather than their actual political leaning. The previous paper is not as accurate to yours, but at least their method is how we as human beings would judge someone's political view, not through some arbitrary guilt by association. Actually, you know what? Let's get back to the human reviewers. So how do these people get these numbers in the first place? And this is where Recfluence comes into play. According to the GitHub page, Recfluence is an analysis of YouTube's political influence through recommendations. In order to limit subjectivity, a well-defined process was followed to tag channels appropriately based on the content of their videos, which is why we employ three or more reviewers independently to classify more than 90% of the channels. You heard that right, people. Three or quote-unquote more people are employed to independently classify the channels. That will surely curb the biases. And yes, the creator does admit that this program has limitations, and one of which is the classification of the political category, which is prone to bias and subjectivity. How can we trust the results? Well, the creator has tried to address this by giving them to three plus reviewers who independently classify each channel. That is assuming that those reviewers are people from various political spectrums and not from only one side, right? Right? Or should I say left? Now, there's no mention on who specifically the people reviewing the channels. It's just the statement that there are three or more people doing it. They did, however, provide a reviewer reliability chart. The chart explains two things. The first one is the intraclass correlation coefficient. Basically, it means how different the classified data is from one data to another in the same class based on certain information captured by the classification. In this example, the state-funded tag has a very high ICC rating, meaning that the data in the class are similar to one another by 0.88. Conversely, the provocator tag is a lot harder to differentiate. They only have an ICC rating of 0.14. Then, there's the agreement chart, which means the portion of the times reviewers agree on a certain tag. And this is where you see its biggest flaws. In the topic of judging between left, center, or right, the reviewers only agree about 62% of the time. I think if you put more and more reviewers, that number would be much much lower. There'd be a freaking bloodbath of a debate before the program can even be finished. So what this says to me is that the reviewers themselves, to which the transparency tube is based on, is not the most reliable in classifying political leanings. 38% disagreement is not a low number. It's a very significant number. As I said many times already, political leaning is very subjective and you can't just have three or more people review it. That's not a very high number of people reviewing these channels and you don't even disclose who they are or at least from what I'm seeing here, you only disclose their reliability and even that one shows that these people are not reliable. So in conclusion, Transparency Tube uses a very ludicrous method in classifying people's political leaning, which leads into misclassification and misinformation being spread. You do not use subscriber data to classify people's political leanings. That is straight up guilt by association. You need to actually watch these channels, talk to these people, and assess what their beliefs are. And even then, it's a very difficult thing to classify because it's a very subjective metric, one that even hundreds of people would have disagreements with, let alone three or quote unquote quote, more. To people who don't understand how machine learning works, to people who don't understand technology, they're just going to rely on the machine classification because it's technology and it's the future. But as someone who studies machine learning, who uses machine learning to classify hundreds and thousands of data, this is incredibly deceptive. It's misleading and it will lead people into believing false information. I'm not even an expert on this and even I find this ridiculous ridiculously flawed and stupid.